Hello, Minecrafters. Uh, I'm Jordan. And I'm Anthony. And we're going to be walking you through how to play Tekkit Light. For those of you new to Tekkit, Tekkit is an enormous mod that brings a lot of functional machines and mods together to kind of improve your Minecraft experience and open up whole new doorways on what you can do. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to just address things as we go along. Um, I'm going to connect to Anthony's world, and we'll just, we're just going to jump right in. So we'll look at my kind of GUI here first. If we look in the bottom left, we've got the, oh, okay, there's, there's Anthony, aka Peppermint. If we look in my chat, the first time you load Tekkit, you'll have a whole bunch of these little uh, mod reports. So Tree Capitator's reporting, Ray's Minimap is reporting. I don't know why I actually have a waypoint on this world. And the very first time you run Tekkit Light, you'll see a whole bunch, one for almost every mod. So just be ready for that. Uh, in the top right, over up in this area, is Ray's Minimap. Ray's minimap is an excellent tool and we'll be using it a whole lot. So we'll just quick go over that. Uh, you have the coordinates there, we have the menu button, the M key, I'm going to push that. And so we have all of these features. If you're running single player, you'll have available to you the entity radar, which will put entity markers on your map so you can toggle monsters on and off, all that fun stuff, and you can track where they are. And that's a little bit different than playing with the difficulty option, which is hopefully set to normal hint hint and so you can turn the minimap on and off you can change how the surface renders so you can do surface biome obviously uh, there's this thing called the death point I'm gonna turn it on hopefully I won't die but if you die it marks your location on the map where you die uh, we've got some minimap options I'm not gonna mess with these since I like my minimap as it is surface map marker options all this fun stuff you can go through and play with it uh, I don't know why I have a house waypoint I'm just going to remove that. So you can mark locations on your map. So if I wanted to mark the spawn where I am, I would click the add button. I would type in spawn. I hit the OK button. I can adjust the color. I'm going to exit the menu. And then look, here it is, my spawn point. So that's a lot of talking to just show that. I'm going to remove that since I don't care where the spawn is. And we're just going to get to work. So Tech It Light starts off like most Minecraft. You're going to want to find a good location to build your house, and you're going to need wood to do it. So, Anthony here has already started. He planted a tree there. He's got some crafting table. And we're just going to go over here and get some wood. This is a huge hole in the ground, so we're not going to fall down that. So one of the biggest additions to this is the improvement of Tree Capitator. And because of Tree Capitator, you will notice that sometimes when I break logs, they're a little glitchy. So, fortunately that hasn't been happening, but that's enough breaking logs with my things. So, while I'm in the inventory pane, we're going to go over not enough items, which is what you see around you. So, here we have an enormous mod. This mod is wonderful. So, you've got your basic Minecraft window, we've got Peppermint in the background here, Anthony, and we've got some options here. I don't think they'll work for me, since I, oh, I am, I do have administrative power. So if you're an administrator, you can use these things on. And you can set, oh, thank you. <laughs> so you can turn rain on and off, you can turn creative mode on and off. You have two forms of creative mode, so you've got normal mode and creative plus mode, which gives you this expanded inventory. But I'm going to leave it off. You've got magnet mode, which... Um, collects blocks from like I think it's a 16 block radius around you or maybe diameter one of those you can change the time of day by clicking these buttons and you can heal yourself over here you've got some save buttons and this saves your inventory so if you're in creative mode you can build your inventory how you want and save it over here uh, you've got some options down here I don't really mess with these but there's things there the important things are this recipe button and this usage button enchantment is also handy so we're going to go over the real, real nice thing about this. So I have oak wood right now. 
And let's say I want to use my oak wood, but I've never played Minecraft before. So I'm going to hover over my oak wood, I'm going to hit my U button, and it will bring up the shaped crafting table thing. But I can also toggle between this. So I have shape crafting to make oak wood planks, barrels, we'll get to barrels, chest panes, and cannon. And so that's what I can make with shape crafting. Then I have all these other options. So I have shapeless crafting. I can turn wood into obsidian with the minium stone. For those of you from Tekkit Light or Tekkit Classic or familiar with equivalent exchange, the minium stone is the new philosopher stone. So we've lost the ability to click on items to do things with them but we have gained a lot more crafting recipes. And the Philosopher's Stone is still in the game. You can't craft it. You have to cheat to get it. But if you still want it, it's still there. So other things you can do is you can use the Minium Stone and one charcoal or coal to produce more charcoal with wood. You know, just follow these recipes. Um, from this point on, I'm going to assume you know how to s craft things. So smelting shows you how to turn charcoal oak wood into all this stuff. So we've got that. So the other thing you can do is you can use the R button to show what makes oak wood. The U button is what uses it. The R button is what makes it, the recipe that creates it. So you can make oak wood by fusing wood planks with a minium stone. And this will be all minium stone related stuff. Uh, that's cool. You can turn obsidian into wood. Uh, you can use micro blocks to make it. You just. We'll get to micro blocks later, actually. That's a lot of detail to cover now. So, over here, you'll notice all of the blocks in Minecraft, every single one, and every one added to Tech It. And if you want to, you can just simply click these items to give them to yourself if you have the administrative OP privilege. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can also search through it. So, down here, we have the search pane. So, let's say I want wood. Well, here's all the things with wood in the name. So we've got oak wood slab, whatever. And I can right click to clear this field, and then I hit enter to just remove my cursor from it. And when you start playing, you'll realize why that's important. So we're going to get into Tree Capitator now, since this is by far the first module encounter. So I'm going to make the crafting table. And I'll put it down. Now I'm going to make some sticks. So I've got eight sticks. Uh, I need some wood. Uh, if you shift click while you're building stuff, you can make some fun stuff. So I want this wooden pickaxe. I do not want the hoe. I want a sh wooden axe. And I'm not going to build a shovel yet. So Tree Capitator makes it that when you have any kind of axe out or any device that's made for chopping trees, when you cut a block from a tree, it instantly kills that wooden block, every block above it, and every piece of leaf in the tree, and it'll be more, so you'll, you'll see. I'll cut this block, every piece of wood above it will break. You'll notice that my axe has taken damage. Um, it takes damage like it normally does for every bit of wood you consume. And it works on these mega trees. So I'm going to chop this second block just to prove a point here. So everything above the second block gets chopped. And everything below it stays. And that's Tree Capitator for you. It's a great mod. Saves a lot of time. And now I'm just going to run around and pick up all this stuff. So this is day one of Minecraft, which means our primary focus is to find cover and build our house. So we've already decided to build our house on the other side of this hill over here. And we'll go over some reasoning for why we do that. Um, I like to build my house on the side of hills. It saves you a little bit on exterior architecture if you're not very creative. And it makes digging into things to build your home a lot easier. You don't need material to build the exterior, you just keep digging inside. So this area is nice because it's very wide, it's very open. So it'll be good for when we make farming material later. Because we'll need some pens, we'll need some farms, uh, sugar cane, all that fun stuff. And over here we've got tons of animals. So we've got the cows, the chickens, the sheep. Uh, if you notice it's getting dark out. So I'm gonna go over to where the house is. Uh, 
I'm not sure what Anthony is doing right now, but I assure you it's useful. And I'm going to get some stone. So let's see, where do I want the entrance to our house to be? I think here's good. Uh, he's my sidekick. He he actually does a lot of the planning, so when I need to know exactly how much material I need for a certain project, he's the guy I go to. And he'll tell me. So, uh, just a quick rule about breaking things. Uh, if you pickaxe, obviously, is made to break stone. And pretty much anything else, that's really hard. You use a shovel to break gravel, dirt, sand, anything that makes a really light squishy noise when you smack it. Uh, notice that I switch to different items sometimes when I break things, so I don't actually have a shovel yet, because I was waiting on getting this crafting table out. And if you use an inappropriate item to break something, you get trouble. What kind of trouble? You break the item twice as fast, that's what I'm trying to say. So. I made these items, and now we're going to go over some of the more exciting things in Tech at Light. So I need a weapon to fight monsters. Normally, Minecraft, you make a sword. Well, we are in Tech at Light, so I'm going to make a halberd, which is part of the Balkan weapon mod. And we'll go find some things to smack around with this. Uh, so notice that I can right-click to change the orientation of the halberd. I've got my axe part facing towards me. This is stabby mode. Stabby mode does extra damage, less knockback, and then I've got stabby part out, or I guess axe swingy part out, and notice that there's a lot of knockback on it. So this creeper has no idea what's going on. And he dead. He was kind of derpy. Uh, oh, one of the changes in Minecraft 1.4 is when you break plants now, or anything that can be destroyed in one hit, you no longer waste uses of your tool. So notice how the health on my halberd isn't going down. That was a large improvement. Uh, I guess I'm going to need wool. And the fastest way to make wool is to kill sheep. You'll be fine. Oh, you're not going to be fine. You'll be fine. Just don't look at the Enderman. So this black guy up here is an Enderman. He's a lot of trouble. I don't want to look at him yet because, hello, why is... You've got armor on. So because I'm playing with the um, Spax Pure BD Texture Pack, I have multiple mod skins, so some of my critters look different. I'm going to eat this apple now, and then I'm going to do something I should not. I'm going to try and find an Enderman at level 1. Ouch! Holy shit! Where'd he go? So I promised myself I wouldn't get killed and I'm hoping that still is the case. Oh, I lost my clicky power. Alright, so one of the downsides of playing multiplayer and while streaming is you kinda have latency. And so... Yeah, we'll just edit that out. We're, we probably won't edit that out, actually. Oh, look, there's more of them. So naturally, I'm going to go pick another fight. Because I didn't learn my lesson yet. Eh, maybe I learned my lesson. Ow! So these are creepers. They blow up when they get near you. Um, you can stand just outside their blast radius and they'll still explode, which is nice. So, this is my death point, as we went over before. And now we'll stop derping around. So, when you kill monsters now, they drop these shards of minium. And for those of you who don't know what a shard of minium is, it's the new ingredient in the Philosopher's Stone. So, if you hover over it and hit the U button, you'll see that you use eight of them and this inert stone to make the minium stone, which is a powerful crafting ingredient. And this is how you make the inert stone, I just hit the R button on it. And we'll try and edit this to condense it some. So, I'm going to turn off this death marker since it's embarrassing me. Uh, there we go. Oh, my friend is fighting creep death mods. Why? How are you angering this guy? 
Where are you? Anyways, Peppermint's off doing stuff, so I'll leave him be. I'm sure he's fine. So, I'm going to continue digging out our house a little bit. I need eight cobblestone to make a furnace. And I think what we'll do is just go... Th Thank you. Did he drop a pearl? Yep. Good. Alright, so I think we'll go through and we'll edit this to speed along some of the parts. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just working on it. Were you working on a house on the other side? We already have a house? Fuck sh... That's getting edited out too. Alright, so we already have a house. And... Let's go see what we've got. I don't know, I wanted it on the other side. Like, I do like this little overhanging archy thing. But... Oh, are you in there? I don't see you. This is okay. I'm having some weird things, so I'm just going to reconnect. <laughs> oh, there you are. Were you breaking that with? Okay, yep. So notice that he's using an axe to break a wooden object. That's very good. Um. So. In the day, we'll go over to the forest and we'll pick out some trees to look at. There are some very particular trees in Tekkit you need to worry about. And I'm not liking the pace we're going through this. Okay, so I'm just going to make some more wood planks. So, I see that. So this is a tree tap, and you use it to get, I have the door actually here, take the door, and you use the tree tap to extract rubber from rubber trees. So we'll go over the big secret to finding rubber trees. It's actually not that hard, but some people don't know it. Uh, so if we look on my mini map, you'll s see to the, oh, what's that direction? West of here. Two purple trees in the forest. So you've got all the red, wow, green. <laughs> green. And then you've got these two purple grayish trees in there. And those are rubber trees. So I'm just going to beeline for them and see what kind of material I can get from them. Uh, Anthony is going to stone over our house. And I'm just not going to wait. I'm just going to go for it. So, I like to have my halberd in my first position. I'm going to get my axe out. So, we're we're going. Anthony is bravely fighting off the creepers. And I'm just going to walk down this way. So, rubber trees, if you don't like the minimap trick to finding them, have very distinctive shapes. Oh, I'm going to Oh, I'm going to get the sugar cane while I'm over here. So again, with the breaking items rule, sugar cane is one of those things that you can break in one hit, so it doesn't use up your item. I heard an arrow. So I'm going to assume someone's shooting at me, but since I can't see them, I'm just going to let them be. Alright, so now we'll continue on to where the rubber trees are. So... Peppermint seems to be having some trouble. But this this is a rubber tree. So we've got the gray bark. We've got the... I'm running fast graphics, so see how these leaves aren't see-through? What kind of careful? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so rubber trees always have see-through leaves, no matter what graphics you're running. And they always have these weird little hats on them, I'm going to call them. So... <laughs> I don't know. They've got these two or three leaves that stick out the top. Shut up. He's he's laughing at me. So now, normally your first instinct is to <laughs> cut down a tree. But we're going to look at the rubber tree and see this little yellow spot? This is a resin. 
And if I use my tree tap on it by not left clicking, see how I break it? If I right click, I suck up the tree tap. And now I'm going to break these leaves and see if I can find any more. Because this is the whole reason we want rubber trees. And the sticky resin they give out will use to craft shit. Um, holy crap. Oh my god. And we don't care about our trees out here, so I'm just going to keep using my tree tap on them until it breaks, which it has. And you can shift click your items in your inventory pane to quickly transport them to your usable position. You can also shift click these to build them all at once and move them down there. So I broke sap nodes break, yeah. So that's where I was at before I left off. So those sap nodes, I pretty much clicked them until they broke. And that's that's not always something you want to do. So when you harvest sap from a tree, you can either click the nodes a whole bunch of times, and that will pull out a lot of sap from them. As you saw, I got 15 sap from two nodes, but that destroys the node forever. So if you don't do that and you let the node stay, it will regenerate, and then you can keep harvesting that node to keep getting tree resin from it, sticky resin from it. This tree's only got one sap spot, and it's in a very sad location, but we're just going to go for it. So, when the node disappears off the tree, then it's gone forever. And I'm going to tree capitate it. Uh, sometimes a tree capitator doesn't work with the uh, rubber trees. That's just something you'll have to keep an eye out for. And that's all we needed out here. So we're going to head back to the house and kind of get into caving. So we've been recording for about 23 minutes now. Uh, yep, that does sound like a good episode length. Maybe I'll just 